All right, back once again with Dr. Aline Bay. And we're going to get into the science of the chakras or Shinkaras or Shinkaru, as well as its effects dealing with herbology. So essentially, we're going to get into the healing with the seven chakras with herbs. That's essentially what we're going to get into tonight um, as a discussion of topic. We know that there's plants that have been used as medicines for thousands, millions of years to cure various ailments, um, for protection, even gain wisdom or knowledge, and to help us actually connect back with nature. Um, the various scriptures, such as the um, Ebra Papyrus, um, Holy Bible, Holy Quran, the Rig Vedas, speaks of the various plants and their healing properties and treatments of diseases. Um, if you go to the Bible, you can see in Genesis, the first chapter, 11 verse, it says the herbs yielding seeds and the fruits. Um, it says giving you every herb bearing um, seed, which is Genesis 1.29. Also, um, having given every green herb for meat, Genesis 1.30. So, there's various scriptures that verifies the fact that we're supposed to be using herbs. Um, the Ayurveda is one of the oldest medical systems in the world. All right, the proof of that is the oldest uh, religious book from out of India or Hindustan, or as we refer to it as as Hindu Kush, as they are Kushites originally, but it is called the Rig Veda. And through the Vedas, it speaks about the different herbs in different places. Now, the most famous hymn is called the um, the Healing Plant Hymn in the Rig Veda, which is um, 10 through 97. Um, we know that one of the oldest um, places for herbs um, in the scriptures uh, would be like we said, taken from the Eber papyrus, or the papyrus Ebers, uh, which was actually referred to as, from here we're going to refer to it as the Imhotep papyrus, since he is known as the father of medicine. And so we say the Imhotep papyrus is an Egyptian, or ancient Egyptian, Tamarian, comedic, um, medical papyrus of herbal knowledge dating back to over 15 50 BC all right so amongst the oldest and most important medical papyruses um, of ancient Tamari or Tamare it was purchased um, at Luxor or Thebes in the winter of 1873-74 by George Ebers so that's why we're going to refer to it from here on out as Imhotep papyrus so the Imhotep papyrus is the longest and the most famous of the documents relating to um, this most ancient practice of medicine, herbology or herbalism. Um, the papyrus, although written about, like we said, 1550 BC, um, is really a collection of bits and pieces of folklore, you know, um, of the people, of the Kemites or the Tamarians or Tamarians. All right, so. Now that y'all know about some of these sources that you can look up and go in and get some information on the herbs, we're going to go into um, how the herbs can actually create a healing effect upon the seven major endocrine glands. Some have nine, some have 12, and it will soon be developed 13, which is the star chakra. Um, but Let's just deal with the seven major ones for right now, because in the book of Revelations, 
the first chapter speaks of seven stars in the right hand of the Son of Man. Then by Revelation, the 12th chapter, it speaks of 12 stars above the head of the woman with the crown of gold. So we understand that we will go from a seven major chakra system to develop into a 12 chakra system. All right. Some has already have nine chakra system because there's two particular glands. One is called the berry gland, which is about an inch behind the chin right under the chin area right above the throat area which it feels like um, a little feel like a ball or two balls right there all right then you have in the mouth the epiphany gland um, as it is called within the Vedic text is called the talu gland all right not everybody have these particular glands all right. According to Dr. Deborah Blair, the epiphany gland or the talu gland is the remnants of those who were the gods and the goddesses. He said he didn't know if he wanted for the women for who have this gland. He did not know if it was um, a blessing or as we would say bliss or curse. Because we understand the word blessing means sacrifice, blood sacrifice in particular. So we say bliss or Dr. Malakazi York, who speaks about the the berry theory gland in which that was once within the hippocampus area of the brain in which that um, developed psychic abilities. Now it's in the submental region of the body, which is under the chin area. All right, these are glands um, of those who have developed into a nine chakra system. All right. Like I said, soon we'll have a 12 chakra system and one above the head, which would give us a 13th chakra system. All right. But let's deal with the seven major chakra system right now, or the seven endocrine glands referred to as your pineal gland, pituitary gland, um, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, your thymus gland, your spleen, adrenal glands. Um, also part of that is your pancreas as well as also um, within the woman, the uterus, and the ovaries, within the male, the prostate, and the testes. These are the seven major endocrine glands within the vast majority of people on this planet. So we're going to deal with them. All right, so here's some of the common herbs associated with the seven chakras. Um, first chakra would be dandelion root. Um, we know that the root chakra is located at the base of the spine, all right? Um, also is affiliated with the perineum, which is between, for the male, the testes and the anus. And it is the G-spot area of the woman, about an inch and a half to three inches inside of the vaginal canal. Um, but it connects us to the earth because this is where we receive all our vital nutrients um, essential to our survival. And it's also where body toxins are released. So the root chakra doesn't just ground us physically. It also grounds us temporarily by keeping us in this present moment, in the now. It also grounds us temporarily um, by keeping us in balance. All right. It keeps us balanced. So any imbalance in the root chakra can lead us to having problems in the legs, the feet, the rectum the tailbone, um, the immune system, depression, autoimmune deficiencies. So dandelion tea has been found to be very effective in the treatment of depression, of the gallbladder, um, high blood pressure, and is actually viable um, as a survival plant. This is a plant that you need to keep on hand all right, all the time because it contains all 12 nutritive blood, tissue, and muscle salts necessary for the body to purify itself. So dandelion acts as a natural toxin, oh, excuse me, tonic, all right, um, as a natural tonic to the whole bodily system. Um, it destroys acid in the blood, um, so it makes the body alkaline. Therefore, dandelion is an excellent blood purifier and builder. 
right? It stimulates the um, the liver to detoxify um, the poisons that has been built up um, also within the kidneys to eliminate um, um, the waste. It's one of the safest plants, one of the safest plants. And therefore it must be used in a, it can be used in a tea, um, even for babies and children. All right, I wanna make that clear. Um, it is matter of fact, it's been used for childhood diseases such as measles, mumps, chicken pox, and other ailments. Um, it's also used or has been used as in for people who suffer from insomnia, um, kidney problems, bladder, gallbladder, pancreas ailments, and actually um, digestive disorders. All right, it is it helps um, heal um, anemia, bronchitis constipation, diabetes, cancer, gallstones, gout, jaundice, tonsillitis, skin problems, the flu, heartburn, or what we refer to um, reflux disease, boils, and etc. All right. Now, if you use dandelion, there's other foods that you can add into it in order to help improve your system. Um, carrots, beets, um, parsnips, radishes, onions, garlics, um, potatoes, anything that has roots, you know, um, such even in such as various herbs, um, alfalfa, aloferox, maca roots, um, ginseng root, um, and etc. All right, can be used um, to soothe the effects of the root chakra. All right, so I want to make sure that you understand that right now for the um second chakra which is the navel or the sacral chakra um it's located um right below at well at the navel right below the navel um of the admin of the ab, abdominal uh, region um between for the women between the ovaries um for the women and near the prostate gland for the men um the fundamental quality of this chakra is pure creativity, attention, um, sensual um, expression, um, unencumbered by the ego. All right, now the first chakra, that's the ego, all right, that's the ego, um, in which that the negative quality of the first chakra is fear. Now, on the second chakra, when this chakra is blocked, it can lead to eating disorders, um, urinary tract problems, reproduction disorders, um, occasional headaches and migraines, fevers, emotional imbalances. All right, so um, the herb in which that is good is licorice, which is very good for the adrenal glands in that region. All right, um, most common is um, its treatment for colds and coughs, um, but it's also good for... Um, great for fatigue, chronic fatigue, um, gastric and um, canker sores and abdominal pain, um, inflammation, muscle spasms, um, bronchitis, asthma, pneumonia, even the sexual stimulant. All right, it also improves the complexion in the hair and vision. So other herbs and spices that can benefit or that are beneficial along with licorice for the second chakra is um, phenol, um, cinnamon, vanilla, carob, um, paprika, sesame seeds, gardenia, um, coriander. So these herbs and nuts or seeds, excuse me, can be used um, in order to help heal the second chakra. All right, now the third chakra is the solar plexus and rosemary is excellent for the solar plexus. All right, the solar plexus is the power center of the emotions and positive self-control, right? So if this chakra is blocked, we, can, we tend to feel unworthy and have a low self-esteem. Our emotional state is one of um, depression and anxiety. This is where people can take on panic attacks at, is at this location. Because we tend to doubt ourselves and mistrust others. Right? So 
here's some of the benefits for rosemary as one of the best herbs for the third um, chakra. All right, um, we know that rosemary is excellent for cancer prevention. Uh, researchers uh, have done studies and they've seen the effects against breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, leukemia, and skin cancer from rosemary. Uh, we know that rosemary improves the memory. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, mentioned in a book, um, a herbal book back in 1529, about how rosemary it was taken for the weakness of the brain. All right. So it has very good qualities. It also is an immune booster. All right. Because of its antioxidant and anti inflammatory. Um, properties so it's an excellent overall healer of the body all right is excellent for the digestive system is excellent for hair growth is excellent for the respiratory health is excellent as an anti-aging um, property all right so some of the other herbs in which that correlates is like um, Mush, marshmallow root, all right, in which that helps to relax the third chakra and softens our um, um, efforts to control life. Um, it helps us to relax the diaphragm and reconnect to our breath. Other useful herbs and spices are anise, um, celery, cinnamon, lily of the valley, various mints such as peppermint, spearmint. Um, ginger, turmeric, cumin, and um, fennel. Once again, all right. Um, the fourth chakra, that's the heart um, chakra. All right, um, it's the center of the of the of the body. You know, cause you have the three lower chakras connected, as the heart chakra is the fourth, and then the three higher chakras. Um, which symbolizes this connection to the heart. So the heart is the center, all right, or the center of love and compassion and forgiveness of our bodily energy system. Now, <clears throat> when this chakra or shankara is blocked, um, we tend to feel disconnected and have problems loving ourselves as well as others. We tend to experience poor circulation on the physical level. Um, we lack empathy of the emotional um, at the emotional level. Um, lack devotion on a spiritual level. Many issues of love, grief, hatred, anger, jealousy, fears of betrayal or loneliness. Um, as well as also the ability to heal ourselves and others are centered at the fourth um, chakra. Alright, so um, the best herb to use or one of the best is hawthorn berry. Or hawthorn berry increases... Um, to trust in the process of life and encourage you to feel safe following your heart. You also, it also helps strengthen the heart and the blood vessels. Hawthorne Berry is excellent for um, heart problems, um, blood pressure issues, um, whether high or low, nervous disorders, fatigue, poor circulation, emotional stress, insomnia, arthritis, rheumatism kidney problems um, you know and it's even good for me um, um, help to prevent miscarriages all right so you can also use in conjunction to hawthorn is cayenne pepper garlic jasmine lavender um, rose basil sage thyme um, cilantro parsley is also good for a healthy heart Marjoram is or can also be utilized. All right, so we want to be able to make sure that y'all understand there's other herbs too, but these are just the ones that I found in which that helps with each endocrine gland or chakra, shankara. All right, um, the fifth chakra um, is of course the throat chakra, which is largely responsible for self-expression and communication. Um, the herb here would be what is called rose, um, excuse me, red clover, all right, red clover. 
Now, when this chakra is clear, our speech becomes uplifting, wise, and we can communicate our intent clearly. Uh, in unimbalance or imbalance, throat chakra can lead to thyroid problems, um, laryngitis on the physical level, codependency on the emotional level, unclear thoughts on a mental level, insecurities on a spiritual level. So we often speak without thinking and have trouble expressing ourselves in an authentic way. It is also responsible for nervousness, fear, and anxiety. So red clover blossoms um, assist in allowing a free flow of communication and self-expression. Red clover is an excellent blood purifier. It um, benefits the entire, the entire bodily system. It has been known to restore fertility. It is especially good to calm the nerves and um, ease arthritis, rheumatism, and bronchitis. It heals. Um, it helps to heal skin problems such as acne, boils, psoriasis, as well as also breaking down growth, tumors, cancers. Right? There's a study that was conducted at the University of Maryland Medical Center which showed that um, in conjunction with red clover, lemon balm is capable of healing several ailments, including thyroid conditions. All right, um, Eucalyptus oil is beneficial as an oil for decongestion. Simply rubbing a few drops of the oil on the throat will help. Um, other herbs and spices that can help with the throat chakra is... Um, Colt's foot, um, peppermint, spearmint, sage, um, pink Himalayan salt, um, and lemongrass. All right. So keep those in mind. Now, the sixth chakra, um, which we refer to as the third eye, is associated with intuition and the pineal gland. Um, in particular, the pituitary gland here as it connects to the pineal gland. All right, so when this chakra is blocked, we tend to lack in imagination and, intuit and um, intuition, resulting in poor decision-making and self-deception. All right, um, physically, the third eye weakness may manifest as an ear or eye problem, headaches, migraines, insomnia, or even nightmares. Um, now, eye bright is the herb here that you would want to use. Um, there's others such as mint and jasmine, that are herbs that can be used to open the third eye or what is called the sixth chakra. All right, so eyebright helps to see both the light and darkness as part of the whole and is used to cure eye problems. All right, it stimulates the liver to cleanse the blood. It has also been used for all kinds of eye ailments and has been known to improve the um, eyesight by strengthening the eyes. All right, so it may also be taken as a tea internally as well as um, used as an eye wash externally. All right. It has also been used for um, allergies, high fever, cataracts, glaucoma, um, vision problems such as far and near eyesight, um, blood cleansing, diabetes, digestive disorders. Um, like I said earlier, um, liver stimulants, memory, and etc. Now, along with eyebright, um, mint has also been found useful in curing depression, migraines, and memory loss. It has also um, increased connectivity between the mind and the body. So these herbs and spices can energize and heal any imbalance in the third eye. All right. Now, not just eyebright and mint, but also juniper mugwort which is um also wormwood all right rosemary lavender all right has been used all right and here's the last one which is the seventh chakra uh, which is connected to universal divine energy all right um this chakra is associated with wisdom enlightenment and um trans you know transformation you know transcendation or transcendence all right um when our crown chakra is cleansed and open we experience divine union and cosmic love 
you know. Um, however, if there's problems in that area, then a person can develop Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, um, dementia, a memory loss, um, you know, strokes, dizziness, etc., etc. All right. So the herb here to use is ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo biloba. All right. Now, lavender flowers and lotus flower also assists in opening and activating the seventh chakra. Lavender brings an alignment with the divine wisdom on a daily basis and is actually a popular herb for enhancing meditation. While lotus leaves um, and stem are widely used by the Japanese and Chinese um, in their cuisine, um, as every part you know has its own set of benefits. But in this particular um, part, lab, um, lotus plant is actually used to activate the 1,000 lotus petals of the seven chakra. All right, so when our crown chakra is cleansed and open, we experience this divine union and cosmic love. But it also, our unique frequency is in tune with the cosmic muse or orchestra. All right, we know that ginkgo increases oxygen and blood circulation flow to the brain and other extremities. All right, so it helps to eliminate stress. All right, and it prevents strokes. It prevents um, impotency. All right, so um, we're looking at the qualities here of these herbs. Um, lavender is is one of the best, also for the seventh chakra. You know, as it works well actually on all the chakras. All right, so. This is what we want to say about those particular herbs. You can go to my website, www.drlimelbay.com. That's www.drlimelbay.com. You can go to our ancestral herbal blends. All right. We have CR, which is cancer remedy. We have um, HBP, which is high blood pressure. We have SP, which is stroke prevention. We have DF, which is diabetes formula. Um, we have BB, which is the brain blend. We have NT, which is the nerve tonic. We have MR, which is the mucus remover. We have WL, which is the weight loss. We have BC, which is the blood cleanser. All right. And we have other herbs such as the Tantra man, which is TM. We have TW, which is the Tantra woman. We have MP, which is the miracle pregnancy. We have um, MO or Mo cleanse. We also have um, antennas, which is good for the hair. We also have worm away, which get rid of the parasites and negative bacteria. We have chi power, which is excellent for overall health and longevity. All right. And we have eye bright, which is excellent for the brain, the eyes, digestive system, liver, etc., etc. So, Please go to www.drlimelbay.com to our herbal section, Ancestral Herbs. I am, as I showed in the beginning, a master herbalist. I was trained at um, the Emmanuel Bible College and Herbal Academy under a great metaphysician. All right. As well as also I was taught by Dr. Paul Gauss, um, who is one of the top herbalists in the world. All right, so please support us, and um, we want to say peace and love to everyone, and we out.